you're all going to lose muscle, and so am I. In fact, after the age of 30, we're both going to lose muscle at about a rate of 5% per decade. So today I've got five tips that you can start implementing right now to make sure you don't lose muscle when you get older. Tip number one, and it is don't be inactive. We know from years of studies that when you put people in bed and tell them to not do anything for long periods of time, they lose a lot of muscle. To be more precise, if you laid in bed for a week and didn't do anything, you might expect to lose up to around 5% of your total body muscle mass. But other studies have shown that for every extra hour you spend watching TV sat on the sofa, your risk of developing something called sarcopenia, which is basically having low levels of muscle mass and strength, increase by 33%. If you're inactive, you're simply not going to have as much muscle mass as someone who is more active. And I don't mean someone who goes to the gym and lifts heavy weights all the time. I mean someone who just walks regularly or someone who just gets their body moving regularly. Tip number two is to weight train at least twice a week. Now, weight training is pretty much the most potent stimulus we have for muscle growth. Now, that may seem obvious, but when we do other things to try and grow muscles, including giving people anabolic steroids, doing other forms of exercise or other forms of movement for the muscle, lifting weights consistently produces the best results and the best growth to muscle tissue. But why two times a week? Well, there was a recent review that was published that compared one, two, and three times a week training and found that training two times a week was a lot better than training once a week, but not necessarily better than training three times a week. So the authors of that study concluded that intense whole body training at least twice per week is probably going to give you the best bang for your buck when it comes to keeping hold of any muscle you have. Now, obviously, if you've got the time to do it, spreading those workouts out so the training can be slightly less intense over more days is probably a good idea. And that's where we see our four, five days a week training splits come in handy. But if you're looking for what we actually need to do, it is two times a week. And that's what the scientific evidence says. And a bonus tip here is don't spend months or even years without doing any training if you can help it. Now, sometimes injury or illness may prevent you from doing this. And whilst it is quicker to regain muscle or strength than it is to actually gain it in the first place, especially as we get older, any significant time that we don't spend training means that we're going to have to spend quite a bit of time trying to get that back. Tip number three is something you might not be thinking about at the moment if you're a young guy or girl, but it has a huge effect on how quickly you lose muscle as you get older. And that is trying your very best to steer clear of any chronic diseases. Now, I know for some diseases, it's easier said than done and some you just can't help getting. But if I could tell you a one-way ticket to losing your muscle and strength as you get older, it is having a chronic disease, specifically a chronic disease like COPD, diabetes, heart disease. About a third of people with COPD, a third of people with heart disease, and about 20% of people with type 2 diabetes also have a condition called sarcopenia, which is essentially clinically low levels of muscle mass and strength. So it may sound stupid, but in your younger years, if you avoid smoking and drinking excessively, aka most of the things that cause you to be chronically ill, the likelihood of you keeping hold of the muscle that you have as you get older significantly improves. Tip number four is eat more than the recommended amount of protein. Now we have pretty good evidence to say that the amount of protein that's recommended for the average person uh, is considerably below what you'd want to be consuming if you're an active individual. For those people, this study found that consuming 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight seemed to be the optimal amount to cause muscle growth. So my advice to you would be when you're younger and if you're weightlifting, don't follow the recommended amount of protein because that number is based on a minimum amount so that you don't become deficient. If you consume a lot of protein, you lift weights and you build as much muscle as you possibly can in the process, you are more likely to retain that muscle as you get older. And in fact, this study found that even in older people, those who consumed more protein lost about 40% less lean mass than the people who were in the lowest quintile of protein intake. Tip five is about hormones. And there are a couple of things that you can do to help promote good hormone health so that it helps your muscle building, notably managing your sleep and your stress. Stress is great for muscle loss. And when stress affects your sleep, this is really bad news. The release of certain stress hormones might actually promote muscle catabolism, essentially the breakdown of muscle tissue. So how can you make sure that your stress levels and your sleep don't impact your muscles? Now, there are no supplements that can help with this, but what you can do is actively try and improve your sleep hygiene. For example, if you turn your bedroom into a cave environment, making sure it's dark enough, cool enough and quiet enough, then you're going to have your best chance at a good night's sleep. Good sleep is probably going to contribute to lower levels of stress. And it may sound obvious and again, easy for me to say, but if something is causing you chronic stress, that is going to be extremely detrimental to not only your physical performance, but also your muscle mass in general. Something like, for example, if you're in a job that you know that you hate and it's getting you stressed every single day, thinking about the trade-off and whether it's worth it to your health is something that we have to consider. So thanks very much for watching everyone. Hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you all soon.